Today is December 3rd, the rundown. I think we're going to start getting guests on the show. Could try to try to do that. Um, just thinking out loud here. Anyways, let's start with Aaron Rodgers and the Battle of the Sloans. So Sloan from Sloan Sabbath from the newsroom is his girlfriend, Olivia Munn, that little freak. And then we have Olivia, I mean, we have Sloan from uh, Entourage, who's sitting on his lap at a charity event. Big Cat, this is your boy, Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I saw you trying to, like, squeal on him, basically. What do you got here? I mean, it's just, it, I don't, it's nothing. It's, it's Aaron and the gals. He's just got, like, a bunch of girlfriends. He's, you know, he's that guy. He's everyone's friend. He's, he's in the friend zone. I'm not saying anything more than that. I'm not trying to imply anything other than that. But I think he just is a guy who ends up having a lot of girlfriends, but not girlfriends. KFC. But he- I hope you're right, man, because I hate his guts. And she's – both of those girls are two of, like, the sexiest chicks ever. Sloan from Entourage is just, just looks-wise is maybe perfect. And Olivia Munn, I mean, she's the biggest freak maybe in the entire world. So if he's fucking both of those girls or even one of them – that just crushes my soul because he's such a fucking douchebag. But you got, I mean, I just got to tip my cap. I'm not going to snitch on the guy like like one blogger did. Come on, Jesus. <laughs> I would go with Olivia Munn because I've seen the, the, you know, the Photoshop where she's like, I want you to stick my dick in my ass here with like arrows to her asshole. By the way, Hank. Yesterday, uh, we've had this conversation. So I'm talking about something now. I need a picture of Olivia Munn photoshopping, like, pictures of her asshole. Like, yesterday when I'm like, we did the Bieber pose, I was waiting. I'm like, oh, Hank, he's our producer. He'll put up the photo that I'm talking about. No, you didn't. We've had that conversation. Um, Anyhow. Yes. You are absolutely right. I could not believe, though, the amount of people that replied to me saying they would take Sloan from Entourage over Olivia Munn. That's psycho to me. Have they not seen that? That changes everything. It everything. Does change. I, I'm, I'm, I'm team Olivia Munn because of those pictures, but I don't think it's outlandish to take Sloan from Entourage. Knowing what you know? Well, yeah. well, here's the thing. She, I, I think Sloan from Entourage is just a better-looking girl. And if there's a chance that she's even half as kinky, I, I'm still team Munn. I just don't think it's crazy to take Emmanuel Shariki or whatever the fuck her name is. I think I always get her confused. I, for the like first hundred times, I thought she was that Emmanuel like soft porn girl. Anyways, the I, I could see them going toe to toe in the ring and it going fifteen rounds. So I see that. But Olivia Munn, those pictures in her Photoshop, that just it it changes the game. And by the way, back to the story, Olivia Munn, if if. Aaron Rodgers is a heterosexual straight male. You have to be furious. You don't sit in a guy's lap like that. That's That was as sexy, suggestive as anything. So there's got to be a big fight going on if if he's a straight guy. Let's just say that. You got to stop mentioning Emmanuel, Queen of the Galaxy, because it's really dating us. <laughs> See, it's, not, it's not just Queen of the Galaxy. It's like everything right i mean she was like in a million and the name is similar to her name i confused like like stool like 18 year old stoolies are gonna hear us talking about this and gonna go google it and they're gonna like get some grainy footage of an old show that we used to watch on showtime or cinemax or whatever the fuck you know it wouldn't stun me if that's still being played though and like even the younger kids be like oh i know who emmanuel is it could happen don't 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 be surprised. Next up, this was laugh out loud funny. Uh, I instantly, this is the time of year you start putting together your top 100 videos, which we always fuck up and never create the list as we do it. So you got to go read every blog. But this Knicks fan getting carried out uh, one leg. He's got one leg. KFC, what do you got? He's actually a Nets fan. It was at a Knicks-Nets game, which is right now probably the most pathetic sporting event you can possibly imagine. So this dude is a diehard Nets super fan. He's a, he's a one-legged super fan of the Brooklyn Nets. 
which I truly think might be the most pathetic thing I've ever heard. I feel genuinely bad for this guy. Him getting carried out by two arms and a leg. <laughs> There's conflicting reports. Supposedly, MSG guys say that he tried to hit someone with his prosthetic leg. A lot of Nets fans are saying this dude's a really nice guy. There's no way he'd ever do that. So his move to not get kicked out was that he took off his fucking fake leg and he put it on top of his head. Kind of like, you can't take me out because I only got one leg. And they just hoisted him away, screaming in agony. Uh, the perfect amount of time on that video just to see a little bit and you don't know really what happened, it's top three of the year. It better be. Was it at Madison Square Garden then, or was it? At the Garden. So I guess the, the idea was that he was cheering really hard for the Nets, and the, the, the security guards were like, tone it down. And he dialed it up a notch, like, no, fuck that. <laughs> and then they hoisted him out. <laughs> Big cat. First thing, what are the odds that we yesterday talk about like the most embarrassing way to leave an arena, and then we get a one-legged guy getting like carried out like almost like a child screaming in agony? And two, I watched that video, and I wanted to laugh, but I just felt bad for the guy. Like, you could see the pain on his face, and it wasn't physical pain. It was emotional pain from being, like, torn away from his from his nets. The the crowd reaction didn't I, – I didn't see anyone feel bad. there. I saw a lot of people, like, kind of, like, elbowing each other, their buddy, being like, look at the one-legged guy getting carried out. But, yeah, I mean, you know, the, anything goes in New York City, the Big Apple, uh, Madison Square Garden, like you said, one day you're getting people carried out by wedgies, and the next uh, day is by the stumps of their legs. Um, this decision stunned me. I saw Big Cat. I saw what you wrote, which there may be something to it. So – the Browns are sticking with Hoyer. I, I, stunning. I didn't see this coming. It is, I guess, a day after his birthday. It, so a fair point. Uh, I, I'm still stunned by the decision. Big Cat, what do you got? So I wrote the the, the birthday blog, tongue-in-cheek. Tongue Obviously, the, the Browns didn't sit him because his birthday's on Saturday and the game's on Sunday. But that definitely came up at some point. Like, you know that did. Someone in the Browns facility was like, ooh, Johnny's birthday is on Saturday night. We might not want to have this guy go out and play on Sunday. But at the end of the day, I, I, I mean, Brian Hoyer does have him in a position for the first time in forever to go to the playoffs. You got to kind of stick with him. But what do you think of my point, which was this? You can't – like, the, it, if you're going to stick with Hoyer – you can't bring in Manziel in the last game. You got you keep him on the bench till you're ready to make the switch because you're just creating a firestorm and more pressure on Hoyer and more pressure on everybody, and you turned it into a circus basically. He that definitely didn't help, and I agree with I agree that the coach has not played it well because he's been kind of wishy washy the whole time. But I saw that benching more as this game's over. Let's just throw Manziel in, kind of like they were down twenty with like you know, nine minutes left, kind of like the Chiefs and the Patriots. when They benched Brady with, like, ten minutes left. No, that, it was – no, it was much closer game. KFC? You're down 20. It's – coming from a Jets fan, I watched this with Sanchez and Gino, and now Gino and Vic. The yo-yoing back and forth is, like, the worst thing you can do, especially with a guy like Johnny Football. Like, if this was a, your average backup, a normal backup, where it's just like Big Cat said – this is a blowout. We don't want any more embarrassment. We don't want to risk any injury. Let's just throw our second string guy in there. But when it happens to be one of the most popular athletes on the planet, and then you're going to yo-yo him back three days later and make the original guy the starter, it's just going to create a mess. But I don't know, though. Hoyer, he's, they're 7-5, and five, but he's been playing like garbage. I, just, I think if you were going to pull him, you should have stuck with Manziel. Yeah, that's what I think. I'm looking up the score. It wasn't a 20 point game, I don't think. I I I feel like it. It was a three score game. It was at least a three score game with like 12 minutes left in the fourth. Uh, yeah, but he cut it to to what, like 10 or something with six minutes to go. And the Brady comparison, I mean, that was clear. Like, no, that was not a quarterback controversy. They already have this thing going on, so it's you can't really compare. Like that, you, there, there's no difference in my mind to sitting down Brady when he's up 40 or down 40. Well, I'm not comparing it like specifically, but I'm saying there's a certain like benching that teams do. Where they'll just be like, all right, well, this game's over. Let's just like the like they did it with uh, Gino. They brought in Vic when Vic was like, I didn't even I didn't even practice this week. They brought in Vic and then they went back to Gino the next week. Like 
But it's that kind of benching you do with your with your not with your backup when the quarterback is having a bad day and they're just like, all right, let's just fucking pull the plug on this game. But that comparison there are two. We're talking about two teams that have quarterback controversies in place that are now a fucking mess because of that yo-yo. It's like if, if you're gonna if you, if you have a quarterback controversy, if you think that game's out of reach, it probably does you better to just let Hoyer lose that game. Then, if you really, I don't disagree. Out. Yeah, I I don't disagree with that. I'm just saying that that's. I don't think it's a hard and fast rule that if you bench the starter, you yeah. have to you have to go with the backup the next week. And I don't think that game I don't think the Browns thought that game was out of reach when Manzel came into the game. I don't think Manzel thought it was out of reach. I don't think any but I thought it, it, the problem was after the Browns scored, the the Bills drove all the way down the field and scored again. They couldn't get him the ball back, so that was the major problem. But now it's chaos because I don't think anyone thought Manzel wasn't going to be the starter. Um this video's Weird. I'm a shark guy. I, I've never seen this. I don't know if this was like trick photography. The guy is talking to the shark. It's a tiger shark, which, by the way, is like the most dangerous. Great white this, great white that. Tiger sharks kill people. Like tiger sharks go into areas where humans are in low areas and they eat you. This guy was treating the, the tiger shark like a golden retriever. I mean, he had him. He was shaking his head, petting him. Be like, oh, come back for more. I was so happy to see her. I jumped out in front of my camera and gave her some love and affection, not realizing that I was drifting away in the strong current. I had to swim back. I hoped my encounter wasn't over. And as I looked back, I was so happy to see her coming back into my arms where I could give her more of what she really wanted. She moved away, so I stopped, but she immediately turned back. I gave her more love and affection. I could tell she had missed it. Got a little carried away, and once again I found myself down current. So I swam back, still hoping she would follow me and make this special moment last even longer. And fortunately, she did. This time, she went over to the camera and the lights. I prayed that it didn't fall over. Actually, Jason, one of the crew, reached out and gave her some love as well. But then she came back over to me, and I gave her exactly what she wants. I wish there was some way that I could get the world to see what these beautiful creatures are really like so we could end the needless slaughter and keep our oceans healthy not only for them, but for our own existence on the planet. Bizarro world video, KFC, what do you got on Shark Guy? I feel like this guy fucked sharks. He was, like, sexual with these sharks. It was like that guy that we blogged about who fucked dolphins. I think this guy took it to the next level and he bangs tiger sharks. Because you're not, you're not rubbing them and hugging them, and then that's it. You, if you do that to a shark, you take it to the next level. This dude's a shark fucker. <laughs> Big cat. He f definitely fucks sharks. He's like that guy who like pops up every now, now and then who fucked a bunch of dolphins back in the 70s. Yeah. He's like that. He's the shark version of that. More than anything, though, what's this guy's deal like looking for sympathy for sharks? I know they're technically endangered, but give me a fucking break. Like, they're not koala bears. They're not pandas. They're not like furry little shits that we have to be worried about because people go and like stomp on them. They're sharks. Sharks can sharks in this world. Sharks can defend themselves. They've been, around, they've been around for like two hundred million years. They're like anacondas, yeah. like the guys, the people defending the anacondas for eating the dude. Oh no! I'm crying for anacondas, dude. Long list. No, no, no. Snakes and sharks are way different. Snakes, snakes are the worst. I'm a shark guy. Are you like you? I mean, you could use the same argument with killer whales and shit when the Chinese people are going around fucking murdering. Them. Oh no, it's not killer whales. It's the uh, it's the other ones. It's the whatever whales. Whales. Whales are big. Are are you pro kill whale? What? 
Are you pro kill whale? I if you want to go wrestle a shark and kill him in, with your bare hands, I'm fine with that. But you shouldn't be shooting sharks. No, those whales are different. Those whales, like they just fucking, they're like fat pieces of shit that go around and eat shrimp all day. Who plus, wants to kill a whale. Plus, no, no fucking Chinese people are blowing up sharks. Yeah, they are. I'm sure they are. Probably feel bad for them too. I'm sure Chinese people are killing sharks. Sharks can defend themselves. I have no. They I can't. Have no, I have no fucking tears lost for sharks. They can deal with themselves. I have a long list of animals that I have to worry about. It's like gray wolves. You know, gray wolves are like sort of endangered. Fuck that. A gray wolf would eat my dog in two seconds. I don't care about a gray wolf. I care. I care about. I listen again. I, you guys are being sharks are awesome. Yeah, we know, but they can defend themselves. No, they cannot defend themselves if you take a bazooka. If you take a bazooka and shoot a shark, it can't defend itself. But nobody is – you can't even do that. Sharks are too fast. They're predators. They're too smart. Right. Big fat whales just sitting in the ocean getting blown up. Well, if you throw a net down, the Chinese people are doing something. I guarantee you if I get off – after this show, if I Google what are the Chinese doing to the sharks, there's going to be a lot of shit that's really fucking shady. That's just fishing. A shark is a fish. That's just fishing. You want to stop fishing? No, they're not eating the sharks, though. They're doing weird shit. They're making necklaces. And trust me, you don't know anything about sharks. I, you know, I didn't know everyone's so anti-shark here. Shark fin soup. Dang. That's what they fucking make. They what eat that shit. I'm gonna do so much research. I didn't know this was a this was a fucking anti shark group turned into an anti shark convention. Let's move on. I, I, this sucks. Sharks are awesome. They I love sharks. I no, love you don't. Sharks. You're just a huge pussy about sharks. That's all. Oh, I'm not. I don't. If you, I said, if you can go into the ocean and, and wrestle a shark and beat up a shark, do it. I. You poor are sharks. Oh, you the are, poor sharks. You are oh. besmirching the good name of sharks. Sharks don't want your sympathy. That, yeah. That hurts their reputation. If I was a shark, I'd tell you to take your sympathy and shove it up your fucking human ass because I'm a badass, I'm a shark, and I don't need Portnoy singing about, oh, we're so defenseless to the Chinese. That that that, that hurts the shark cause. You're putting them Absolutely. Back. You're setting them back. We'll see what happens. I'm going to research. I guarantee you, you guys will be eating your words. Speaking of eating your words, a lot of controversy today. Beautiful segue from me. Lots of lots of uh, controversy. This 14-year-old fucker on the internet who is, I don't know why I follow him. I follow this MLB alt. He did the Billy Butler one. He got all this publicity. He's 12. I called him out on I said, that's his brother or something. He's... I follow him on Twitter. He reports nine things wrong a day. The latest is that Lester has signed with the Cubs. Not true. I fucking, it's not even about Lester. I still think he's coming to the Red Sox. It's about this 14-year-old or 13-year-old or whatever he is. I fucking hate this kid. Everyone's like, oh, he's only 12. I don't give a fuck. When you come on the internet, everyone's the same age. The playground, the level field, you start tweeting, you start coming at me, you're a fuck. I hate this kid. Big cat. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, the, the rumor started with incarcerated Bob. And if you can trace anything to incarcerated Bob, you got a problem. Isn't he the one who threatened KFC? Yeah, he wants to kill KFC. Yeah. <laughs> which, which concerns me like 50%. He, he like, we kind of made peace, but he's a dude who like, I, I really would rather not have an internet beef with, but it, him and the 14 year old, like you said, it's, just, it doesn't matter. You could be a 14 year old white kid. You could be a big black thug. I don't care. It's all about your results. The proof is in the pudding. And if you get these rumors right, so be it. That's great. As soon as you start to just throw shit against the wall and every second or third rumor is just bullshit, you're out. I, I actually liked the, uh, the kid for a little bit. Even when he started to be proven like he didn't have sources, I kind of respected that he snaked the whole internet. Like he just – he played everyone. I can respect that. But now the cat's out of the bag that he doesn't know what he's doing. He's out too. You're just another fucking nobody on the internet. Dave. As a Twitter investor, here's another great idea that you should run up the food food chain. If you try to predict news like this, you should have a running tally underneath your underneath your handle. That should yeah, be I it. Like that. I should be able to go and look and be like, all right, well, he's gotten nine out of the last ten things he's predicted wrong. Twitter stats. We need Twitter stats. I like that. I, I, I'm going to try to mention that at the next investor meeting. Yeah. Send that one up the chain. I mean, poor Feidelberg, we still have a fucking blog sitting in our draft that Cespedes was traded to the Reds. I'm like, where'd you get this news? He's like that 12-year-old. He sat there and wrote up a whole fucking blog. Um, UAB football, 
cut. K. Marco posted this video. It was a pretty interesting video. People are crying, sobbing. They're talking to the president of the school. I can't tell you how many surgeries this team, this people have gone through, man. It's like this team, put all these colors, to put this symbol and represent college football. For no one gave us a chance, ever, ever. Not even our own board of trustees. Never gave us a shot. And it's about us in this room, it's about that man, which I love dearly. And I would do anything for him. And I know he would do the same for me. And same for the rest of these guys. And Miss Shannon, the sweetest girl in the world, and all these people. It's more than just numbers. It's people, it's families, it's UAB football. I have mixed emotions on this. I have mixed feelings on this. We'll start with the UKFC. What do you think on UAB football being cut? I thought that was pretty sad. I mean, that, that, that dude at the beginning who points out the kid who had three surgeries last year, and you kind of realize that, like, these kids gave up, like, the best years of their lives. They dedicated it completely to a cause that's now just, like, yanked from them. That fucking sucks. I don't, I don't, I don't know much else about the, the reasoning behind it. Or I mean, it's UAB football. It's not exactly the most glorious program. But for those kids who, like, gave their all and gave everything of their, of their college years to that team, it sucks that it's just plucked away because of budget issues and shit like that. Big Cat? I don't feel as bad for the kids just because I think in the NCAA you can transfer right away. So they can you go can. play next year and they get any – like, if you're good at UAB, you're probably happy in a way because now you get to transfer to maybe a better program and play next fall. As for how it affects me – I usually would just like circle the UAB Louisiana Tech or UAB Tulsa game and hit that over every week, and so that kind of sucks. My thought on it, and, and they're saying it shouldn't have anything to do with numbers. These guys gonna be chicks because their logic really was we need like Title Nine to save us. Like the the program is not making money. Clearly, they're losing a lot, so they're getting rid of it. It sucks, but that's really how everything should work to a degree, except for women's sports. So they should just grow pussies, and then maybe you know someone would swoop down, some feminist, and save the program. Next up, um, this was interesting. A Mongolian wedding tradition. I don't even know that we had to talk about this. The video is strange. They, like, kidnap the woman. They fake fight like they're trying to save her, but they're not. I... I don't even know why this is in the rundown. Does anyone want to talk about this? It's a shit ton better than than how we do things, right? This is how you like propose almost, right? Yeah, I think that's how you get married. And I, the only comment I had was, what if you're Mongolia? If you're trying to like enter 2014 and be on our level, this shit's not helping. Because this is exactly what I imagine all I these know, countries man. like work. I you think we got it all wrong. Women. I think we have it all wrong. Whether this is how you get, this is how you propose, or how you get married. We gotta buy an expensive fucking ring. We gotta, we gotta feed everyone and rent everything out. Spend all this fucking money. I'd rather just bundle a chick, throw her in a car, and be done with it. Mongolia is ahead of the curve on this one. I didn't think it was the proposal though. I thought it was like the wedding was a week away and you stage a fake party. I mean, I don't know. Strange. Either way, my point is. Next time someone, some fucking pussy comes at us like, don't make fun of third world countries, just watch this. This is why we make fun of you because you're like, you're living in the whatever, 15th century or whatever. I don't know what century you're living in. It looked like an NBA fight too. Like when they stole her, everyone kind of fake trying to like save her, I guess, but they really weren't. It was all for theatrics. Um, probably... The biggest story of the day, maybe the month, Brady Hoke fired at Michigan. I was on the fence with this. I'm a Michigan man. Um, I don't like changing coaches every two seconds. So I, I, I had no problem giving him another year, especially if we're not getting Harbaugh, although I wouldn't mind Shiano. The bigger deal is this interim AD gets up and gives a speech and says we want to get rid of the term Michigan man. That's the most ludicrous thing I've ever heard. Coming from a Michigan man, what a Michigan man means is you're a winner. You're, you're better at life. We, we produce presidents, quarterbacks, bloggers, tradition. 
And I, and I know, Big Cat, I already know you're going to go into your whole, tr- oh, you're all about tradition, you're all about this, you don't win. Listen, without tradition, someone tweeted this, without tradition in college football, it, it, it might as well be the minor leagues. I mean, the fight songs, the colors, the helmet, the campus, the tradition, that's what makes college football college football. If you can't be a Michigan man, then what's the point of even having a team? Big Cat. You are exactly the type of person he's talking to when he says that he doesn't want to. He doesn't want the Michigan man thing anymore. Yeah, well, I'm talking to him. You have to. You. It's adapt or die. Okay. Look at Nebraska. Nebraska thinks that they can live off tradition as well, and Nebraska's nothing. Look at Alabama. Alabama went out and hired a non-Alabama guy to coach their team, and he's fucking killed it. I. I, I don't. You, I don't care if we, if you all being a Michigan man means is you know we're better than everybody else and we win at life and on the football field. It doesn't mean you had to graduate from there. The point though, you, you need do that to again. Adapt. There's no Michigan men. You, if you, if you're not winning at life anymore, you're not winning on the field. When you run around trotting out this Michigan man tradition, you sound like a fucking asshole. No, it isn't. It means you're. It means you just landed the best job on earth. You should be kissing the ground. But it doesn't mean that you have to graduate from there. I'm not limiting our pool. But it's not even the best job. It doesn't even matter about graduating anymore. The, the program and everything is such an embarrassment now that when you spew off about Michigan, man, you sound like an idiot. It's not an embarrassment. Here, here's the problem. You need to find a way to create a new tradition at Michigan, and basically the, the way that college recruiting works now is that kids want to go someplace warm, they want to go someplace with hot chicks, they want to go someplace with state-of-the-art facilities, and they want to go to a place where a coach will have their, give them the best chance to get the NFL. When you keep talking about tradition and the winged helmet and winning a national championship in 1940, the kids fucking fall asleep. No, but we have – no, no, we have both. We have both. We have all of what you said. We have state-of-the-art facilities. We have the biggest games. I think on PTI they said yesterday the beauty of Michigan is it's like in basketball if it's Duke, North Carolina. Even if they're not good, it's a huge game. You're it, Once you get good again, you're the number one game every single week. That's a huge advantage. That's tradition. You should be able to use that. The fact that Hoke stunk as a coach, you should be able to do what Saban did, which is come in and be a smart guy and use all the Alabama tradition and money and pomp and circumstance to your advantage and understand that when you come in. I don't disagree with that, but what the problem with Michigan is every that's all they fucking talk about. All you talk about is Michigan man. That's your Michigan man this, Michigan man that. If we had Hank do a super cut of how many times you fucking said Michigan man, it would go for seven hours. So the point that this guy's right. making, he's not saying get rid of tradition. He's saying you have to find a way to to resonate with the, the recruits these days and the younger audience. And walking around saying Michigan Man 100 million times puts everyone to sleep. I, I that makes perfect you, sense. I guarantee you, if I was in a living room, every single recruit in the history of the world would go to Michigan. I'd have them bleeding maize and blue out of the ears. The way... My first question would be, uh, so what's what's the temperature like in uh, in November in Michigan? Oh, 20 degrees. Oh, okay. Well, I have a rec- I have a recruitment letter from Florida State where there's a million smokes all around. And then you would go, but you could be a Michigan man. And- no, my next my next question, my next my next thing would be, um, what position? Oh, you're a quarterback. Let me introduce you to Tom Brady and Giselle. You want to go to Florida State, name one Florida State quarterback in the NFL. We're a system with tradition, with big, hunking, NFL-style quarterbacks who can throw balls over the mountain. I wouldn't have gone to this run and shoot. We're going to make you money. Michigan has the NFL pedigree. We have these big offensive linemen. We have these quarterbacks. We used to turn out NFL players every three seconds until we went to Rich Rod. So I win, you lose, and you're a jealous Wisconsin fan because even though Wisconsin is better now for like a decade, Wisconsin's an afterthought. Um, I, I, I did not lose that. Anyone with a brain knows I did not lose that argument. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. You, you, all you said was all you. Said, you don't like Michigan people who wear Michigan t-shirts. You, all you said was we got big quarterbacks. You have Tom Brady. What other quarterback? 
Ryan Mallett didn't even want to fucking go there anymore. No, he left when they transfer, when they went to the run and shoot. I mean, the quarterback train stopped when we went to a run and shoot. Oh, they want to play Oregon-style football. They want to go to the Pac-12 and run and shoot. They don't want to play boring-ass Big Ten football. Get that through your fucking brain. I'm a Big Ten fan through and through. But they don't want to play that style of football. What, what style does Alabama play? They fucking lit it up. Uh, well, who's Amari Cooper? Who's Blake Sims? Those guys are fucking... What are you talking about? But Michigan had those guys. Michigan's always had wide receivers. You're changing. Alabama plays virtually the same exact style of football that oh, Michigan used. they play used. it well, though. They, yeah, the difference is they actually win. But your argument of they want to play Oregon fast, crazy style football, and that's how you win is not really true. It's the coach. We don't have a coach. Alabama is Michigan. Michigan is Alabama. They just have a better coach. Oh, my God. They're not the same school. Oh, my God. Uh, what? Yeah, one has a good coach and one doesn't. Oh, my God. The Big Ten has changed, Dave. We can't recruit the same players we used to recruit. This has gone on too long. Just accept the reality of it. You're you're in banana land. Um, banana land. Yeah, banana land. Hot girl mugshot. It's kind of like anticlimactic at this point. Throw up the mugshot. What do we got on this girl KFC? She's a sexy chick. She's cocky. She threw out "fuck what you heard," and my mugshot's cute. And her, you know, her response to Twitter on why I got arrested was Xanax, homie. She's got to be the sexiest drug dealer, maybe of all time. Is she actually a drug dealer? He got arrested for possession with intent to manufacture or distribute. Oh, yeah. So, nice. I mean, imagine like weird that girl the chick you buy your Xanax from. I would, I would be fucking addicted. I would be hooked. But yeah. uh, more than her looks, which were nice, and I like them very much, the answer Xanax, homie, like that turned me on more than anything. That's just such a bad bitch thing to say that I just like, I could never hang with a bitch like that. When you say homie is a white person, it's funny a thousand percent of the time. It's an automatic laugh. You can't overuse it, but if you just put homie every once in a while at the end of something, funny. That's like a comedic tip. That's the rundown. I shouldn't have eaten this bread. That was very amateur hour. You would have killed Hank for something like that. It just sitting there, it like was looking at me. I can't believe you think that sharks need backup from you. Crazy day in Portnoy land. You are you are in banana land, sir. Yeah, you're, you live in banana land. Yeah. Sharks the are in banana land today. They're the oldest animals on the planet. They're like the perfect predator. They've apex everything, and here's Portnoy crying about sharks. We need to save them from the Chinese bazookas. Oh, they're like whales. Oh, my God. Sharks are so endangered. Shut the fuck out. Apex predators, Dave. Apex predators. No natural predators. The sound predators. of that is awesome. Unf who, what is killing sharks? Unfortunately, sharks have turned out to be very vulnerable to destruction and possibly even extinction by man. Listen, they are the apex. Men, listen, that's my whole point. They're killing the ocean. They're dominating the ocean. They can't be beating the ocean. And then man comes around, these Chinese motherfuckers, and they start killing them. And you guys just want to let it happen. And when sharks are extinct after a million years of running this show, you'll have nobody to blame but yourself for sitting there with a thumb up your ass when it happened. Get better. Do better. You can't do better against bazookas. It's not like a team when the Patriots run up the score on a team and you're like, play better. Play better, Sharks. Stop being so stupid and, and getting caught by a bunch of Asian fishermen. Yeah, all right, here we go. In Hong Kong and Singapore, Hong Kong, those motherfuckers, uh, will pay, gourmets will pay a fortune for specialist dishes made from shark fin. They're usually obtained by barbarous practice of finning, where the shark's tails and fins are cut off while they're alive. Then the shark is thrown back into the water to die, a drawn-out, agonizing death. Every animal is poached and killed and shit. The, the sharks are still at the top of the list of the guys we need to worry about the least. And to be, perfectly to honest, to be perfectly honest, if sharks did become extinct, who fucking cares? Right. No, that's fine. All right, I can live with that. You're not a shark guy. You have that's that's my point. I, I'm a shark guy. Do you even understand how ecosystems work? It wouldn't change a thing. Do you? 
If sharks die, then they'll probably be irrepre irreplaceable percussions. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that sounds like a man living in banana land. <laughs> Listen, if you tell me that sharks are going to be extinct in Asia, fine. The Asians fucking kill every animal. They kill them all. That, that, yeah. They're stupid like that, okay? But in America... In our oceans, in our waters, sharks are fine. No one's fucking with sharks over here. It's just a fact. Sharks don't need your sympathy, Dave. Asian sharks need your sympathy. Every other kind of shark... You know what? I don't even have sympathy for Asian sharks. Stop fucking swimming near Asia. You, you know, you're, you're a shark hater. That's fine. You, you're a shark... Shark, stop swimming in bazooka-infested Chinese waters. You're a you're a shark hater, KFC. That's fine. Motherfucker, who's like who's putting his dick in these sharks, just brainwashed you so bad. You want to be a shark fucker? That's the thing. You yeah. want to put sharks in Banana Land? Yeah. You would you would you sh would you do what that guy did with a shark? No, that guy's fucking crazy. Let's say let's say we could guarantee that a tiger shark wouldn't hurt you. Would you fuck a tiger shark? No. Would you cuddle with it? Snuggle yes. up against a tiger shark. I love all marine life. I, I like sharks. I like dolphins. I like whales. I, I'm like an ocean guy. If I wasn't a blogger, one of my top three profession choices was going to be like a, a marine biologist. Mm, interesting. I will say this. It, when, you were, <laughs> when you were looking for a house, you said that your one, your one uh, thing that you wanted was to be able to look at the ocean. And I was like, well, that's basically like, so you're saying waterfront property, which is basically everyone's one well, thing. It's, it's Finer Things Club, Dan. Waterfront <laughs> property in Banana Land is just Finer Things Club. <laughs> Dude, it was like, I just want to be able to sit in my living room and see the ocean. Yeah, I think I delivered enough papers to do that. I mean, I've seen enough of the inside of an Astro van that maybe for a couple of weeks I could see the ocean, see, see the fruits of my labor. Right. Of course, the, the statement itself, like... You you basically hit on the fact that like location matters in real estate. A <laughs> hundred million sharks are killed by commercial and recreational fishing every year. That's a disgrace. Every fucking animal in the sea. You should do a book report about why we should save the sharks. Maybe I will. I probably already did. I took oceans in college. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's that's let's get the Michigan man and and his oceans class. Let's bring it all together. I, I would like a long blog on... Maybe you can sway me. I, I can be swayed. Sway me into why I should care about sharks. I'm not going to do it because KFC, no matter what I say, has already said he hates sharks. So why would I want to prove anything? If he that? has a compelling blog about why we should save sharks, would you donate money to save sharks? I'd donate $25 to save a shark if you can give me a compelling, well-written blog on why I should feel bad about sharks. I'll give a hundred. Fine. Fine. I'm going to write a blog. you got to sway me. All right. Fine. Okay. And, I, and I'll be fair, I, I, but it's got to sway me. Fine. I'll write a blog about saving the sharks. I, I, I will be fair as well. It's just It has to be. I have to read it and be emotionally attached to sharks to the point of opening up my wallet. All right. I'm going to save the sharks. Fine. Done.